Hello, I'm the Kitten Academy historian and I have a treat for you today. We all know the Kazoo Network has brought the kitten world together for adventure and friendship, but how does it start? Today we have an answer. This astonishing recording will help us understand the past and the future of the Kitten Academy alumni far better. Please enjoy and then stay with us at the end for a preview of our next documentary, The Great Heist. It was several days after the Persian scavenger hunt and Kazoo remembered his promise to inform Agent Korn, a.k.a. Coriander, a.k.a. Apollo, of the success of his mission. Kazoo calculated when Korn's brother was most likely to be asleep, i.e. after frantically bunny-kicking Korn, and contacted Korn via the communicator on his collar. Korn was rather sleepy himself, but the sound of Kazoo's voice saying, Korn, come in, Korn. Agent Korn, are you there? Had him bounding down from his tree and over to the litter tray where he knew he would have the privacy to speak. Oh, I'm here, Kazoo. What news do you have for me? It was an amazing success, Agent Korn. The creepy reindeer is suffering from traumatic amnesia, and the kittens got everything they were after, including my photo of Mr. A and DJ, which I have with me in my hammock as we speak. My humans, the Suburbans, and Mr. A were all very confused as to how it came to be tweeted, but humans are often unable to remember what they did five minutes ago, so they quickly forgot their confusion as well. One day I will thank Smokey for her part in the adventure, but only once I have enough dreamy stored up to repay my debt to her. Agent Korn was a little confused by this last statement, but he was so pleased by hearing about the Academy, he just purred and finally got up the courage to ask a question he'd been wanting to ask for ages. Kazoo, could I ask you a very important question? Of course, Korn. We're all kittens here. Uh, how did the Kazoo Network happen? Ah, said Kazoo. That is quite the story, Korn. Are you sure you want to hear it? Oh, yes, please, Kazoo, said an excited Agent Korn. Well, get comfortable and I will tell you. Getting comfortable involved considerable effort, but once Korn had done five circuits of the litter tray, scratched his ear, and licked his leg, he settled down on a pile of newspapers to learn some secrets from the great man. It all began when I hacked into the communicator on the Star Trek gnome at Kitten Academy, and I discovered I was not the only cat using this method. There were other cats whose humans were fans of Star Trek, and they used communicators to order sushi or kitty litter or whatever they could build to their human. Who would have thought, Korn, that cat-friendly humans could also be rather nerdy? I mean, we know that they are the coolest people in the world, don't we, Korn? Naturally, Kazoo. Well, one day I was trying to repay a debt to Logie by ordering a supersized tin of tuna on Mr. A's phone when I accidentally crossed lines with a cat in Australia named Ella. We compared tips for controlling humans for a while, and then she told me about a friend of a human who was a secret agent back when humans were fighting with each other. Fighting with each other, Kazoo? That sounds strange, said Korn. I thought so too, but it was probably about something important like who got the best kitten or how often the human got to sleep on their own bed. Anyway, Ella told me that this man called Francis was very good as a secret agent. It was because he ran a network where little groups of people all knew him but did not know each other so their secret stayed secret and only Francis could spread any news. This made me think about our litters, Korn. Once we leave the academy, only the humans know our real story. All we have are the scent clues we leave each other and Mr. A uses too much bleach for that to be clear after we are gone. I thought a lot about it, Korn, and I decided I would become like Francis, the center of a network of kitten litters that could help the kittens stay in touch with each other, manage our humans, and keep our adventures secret. Our humans keep contact through lots of different computer thingies like Twitter and Discord, but they are not easy for all kittens and cats to use. But I knew a smart cat like me, with a talent for taking control of humans, could put those means of communications to the greater good of kitten kind. You're a decent kitten, Kazoo, to think of all the other kitties like that, said Agent Korn. Well, it's not all generosity, Korn. I do have needs, and contemplation stations don't come cheap, laughed Kazoo. Honestly, though, Korn, I do need to give back. I had a difficult start to my life. I was a shy and retiring kitten when I arrived at Kitten Academy. I was too shy to say much or put myself forward, but Song and her kittens were kind and welcoming, and I found very quickly that I could chew their ears and bunny-kick their heads like they were my own siblings. Loot was the best wrestler I have ever met, and he taught me a lot. He brought me out of my clamshell. I knew when I was adopted I would be apart from them forever, but I wanted desperately to stay in touch to tell them all about my new life with the Suburbans. So I decided to make my own communication network. Oh, I understand why now, Kazoo, said Korn. But I, I really don't understand how. To be clear, Korn, I may be the genius at the center of the network, but I could not have created it without the help of many kittens and cats along the way. Did you know the communicator in your collar is only there because of a mission by Logie and Ari? Really? 
Yes, said Kazoo. I came up with a way of inserting a voice-activated communicator into the buckle or bell of a kitten collar, but I had no way of deploying it. Ari, being a smarter-than-average feline, thought it would be best if we arranged for the devices to be in the collars in the Academy's kitten supply cupboard. That way, when a new litter of kittens arrived, they would be able to join the network immediately. For kittens that were so individual they did not need collars in the Academy, they would either get collars when they moved to their new homes, or the faculty would insert communicators in their skin next to their microchips. The humans think it is funny the way Custard wrestles with the kittens, but he's actually undertaking delicate surgical operations. If it was not so important that the secret is kept, I would suggest to DJ that she study his technique. Custard tells me it is important to hold the kitten steady and insert the communicator in one smooth motion. So how did Loki and Ari get the modified kitten collars into the supply cupboard? Asked Agent Korn. Well, as you know, the Academy gets a lot of packages delivered as part of the mailbag Mystery A and DJ hold for the kittens on Saturdays as part of physical education classes. While we climb and leap and jump on and over and in boxes, Mr. A and DJ talk to each other and to the wall. I have since learned that we were all actually in a giant fishbowl and the humans were talking to a camera, but at the time, I did worry that Mr. A was wearing his headphones too tight, giggled Kazoo. Ari suggested that we use this mailbag habit as our way of getting the new and improved collars and bells into the supply cabinet. Ari and Logie pushed several boxes Mr. A dumped into the kitchen to one side after the mailbag and used one of those boxes to stash the collars inside. Logie then resealed the box. How? interjected Korn. Let's just say it involved clumping technology and leave it at that. <sighs> Sighed Kazoo. Then Logie chewed the corner of the box and they pushed it to a spot near Acro's office where the humans would find it and assume it was part of the mailbag they had forgotten. Did you know, Agent Korn, that there is mail in that house that is unopened for months? Silly humans. So some human called Wombat got credit for sending a whole bunch of callers that they never even saw. So all the kittens who have attended Kitten Academy can communicate with each other? Said Agent Korn excitedly, already thinking about how he would ask Luke for wrestling lessons. No, said Kazoo firmly. I'm in charge. Remember Francis the secret agent? He kept secrets safe because each group of humans only knew him, and if they needed something done by another group, they asked Francis. Humans say loose lips sink ships. Now, I don't really understand that, but I think it means if everyone could talk to everyone, there would be no secret anymore. So I am the center of the Kitten Academy Alumni Network, and people just naturally call it the Kazoo Network for short. Normally, I would be too modest for such a title, but I suffer it for the convenience. Wow, Kazoo, you are the man, cried Agent Korn. Don't get carried away, Korn. I'm only six months old. Just wait till I am a man and really come into my own, said Kazoo. I know you use the network to keep us in touch and for fun, Kazoo, but what else do you do? Well, there have been a few adventures, including Mr. A's birthday party, but we will save those stories for another day, Agent Korn. If we keep talking too long, Rocky is bound to want to use that litter box, said Kazoo. Agent Korn had completely forgotten where he was, and he knew he needed to get some rest, so he was ready for his next battle with Rocky. But he wanted to know more, so he begged, You will tell me about your adventures, won't you? Of course, Agent Korn. You are a critical part of my network, and I will need to educate you in its use if we are to keep our humans under control and the cat world content and sleepy. I will be in touch, and perhaps next I will tell you the story of the birthday party Mr. A did not see coming. As you can tell. Kazoo had very good intentions when he started his network. So how did he come to lead 14 others on a trip to steal back something precious? That story will be told in The Great Heist. Please join us then. And in the meantime, thank you and good luck.